What is problematic in a mix depends on what the artist or producer or person in charge uh, really wants it to sound like and if that's possible to achieve in the mastering. So there are a few things that can be hard to fix in the mastering and I will give four examples of that here. So unless you want it to sound like that, these things can be good to fix already in the mix. My name is Sofia. I have worked with mastering since 2006 and have this channel together with Thomas, who I also have a mastering company together with. We try to put out content here that may be helpful to you in your own music production. Also, if you like this video, feel free to press the like button. So, number one, missing elements in the lead instruments. So take the kick drum for example, which is often important. Uh, there are two aspects to the kick. You have the fundamentals and first harmonics that create a thump and tonality. And also you can look for the transient clarity, which you can find as a clicky sound uh, in the mids. So if you want a clear and distinct kick drum, it's good to have both of these. When it comes to the mastering, it's hard to fix it if the kick drum sounds very anonymous and low in volume especially the fundamental frequencies and first harmonics. Usually if it's just a little bit low, you can enhance it and make it sound good in the mastering when knowing where you have these ingredients. But if it's almost missing, then there's a limit to how distinct you can get it. So if you really want that uh, distinct kick drum, it's good to really get it in place in the mix. Number two. If something is masked by other elements in the same frequency area, uh, then it can be quite hard to dig it out. Again, regarding the lead instruments, it's good to hear these properly in the mix. So if there are a lot of sounds in the overall mix, it's good to make sure that the less important elements don't mask, for example, the vocals. So a tip maybe could be uh, to get the lead instruments into the mixing process as soon as possible to really have them in mind when making all those small decisions. Number three, too much de -essing. It's easier to take away S sounds than to add them. We can lift them in Isotope RX in the mastering for like the one off S sound. Uh, sometimes uh, the lisp is part of the sound, of course, uh, and then that's something different. But just in general, in the mix, with too much de -essing, that's hard to fix. The so number four, a lot of distortion that doesn't add to the mix in a very musical way. So this is possible to restore, but it never gets as good as if it wasn't there. So where could this distortion come from? Sometimes that's not completely clear when mastering and not seeing the mixing session. But we of course have theories about it when it comes up. So it's good to be aware of release and attack times in your compressors when mixing. The lower frequencies are the most sensitive for this because the lowest frequencies have the longest wavelengths. So it's easier to distort those low frequencies with short time constants. Uh, we also think about this when uh, compressing and limiting in the mastering, of course. I would also keep an eye on peak levels when mixing, uh, avoid clipping as much as possible unless it's for artistic purposes, and also leave the loudness to the mastering engineer if somebody else is going to master it, you can leave that to the last step. If you have plugins that simulate analog outboard, or maybe you just have analog outboard uh, that color the sound in some nice way, <laughs> so it creates some kind of warmth, then it's good to consider when that coloration slash distortion crosses the line of being more ugly sounding. Oftentimes there's a sweet spot where you get the warmth but not the more ugly crackle. So if there's a lot of crackle in a very embedded way, it could unfortunately be hard to fix and quite distracting uh, in the music. A good tip is to exaggerate artifacts to get to know what's too much and how it sounds like. I've noticed that if I know how something sounds like, it would be easy to notice it when it comes up uh, in different situations. But if I haven't considered that particular artifact, I'm much more likely to miss it. So these are things that you may want to have a look at in the mixing before sending your tracks off to mastering. If you are unsure, you can always mention it to the mastering engineer and they can notify you if they can fix it or not. If you are mastering your tracks yourself, fixing these things beforehand can make the mastering session much easier. That's it for today. Hope you found it useful and helpful. All the best to you. Good luck with your current projects and thank you for watching.